and welcome to part two of the Deckware Taboo Mark III review. This one's just all about tube rolling, tube swapping, trying to dial in that sound signature to meet your personal personal tastes. Uh, I'm going to share you know, some of my experiences with a variety of tubes and kind of what I thought about them. I'll, I'll also try to paste some of these comments down in the uh, description because it's a lot of material and uh, I'm going to go kind of quick. Uh, if you guys didn't watch the, the, the first part of this on just an overview of the deckware uh, taboo, I, I encourage you to. That'll probably make everything make a lot more sense. If you're not super into tube rolling or, or that level of nerdery, then maybe just skip this video. It's all good. Um, but if you do like this video or anything else on the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Much appreciated. <laughs> So, uh, deckware. Four tubes. Uh, the first tube is the input tube. It's a single tube. It's typically a 6922 or a 6 in one p uh, but you can actually run all kinds of things in there, and we'll talk about that in a sec. These two are the output power tubes, so that would typically be an uh, SV83, a EL84, a 6BQ5. Um, um, I'm going to have less to say on that one. This is the, the rectifier or rectification tube. This might be um, a 5Y3GT, a 5U4, a 5AR4, a uh, 274B. Um, lots of different options there as well. So I'm going to spend most of this time talking about the input tube because in my experience that's kind of what made the biggest impact to the sound signature, but I'll, I'll touch on the other on the other tubes as well. Okay, so starting with the signal tube or input tube, uh, so many so many options to run here. You can run um, obviously the six nine two twos and the six n one p's and the six n five p's and the PC eighty eight uh, PCC eighty eights and the twelve AT sevens and the was it the 12 AU sevens and it just it goes on and on and on and that's what's exciting and if you get on the deckware forums you'll find some great debates about uh what you can and can't run and and what the results of all that are uh let's start from some of the things that were sort of fine but the least exciting so uh this is one of the sort of russian made uh tubes that uh, steve might stock with it and um really really not bad at all tried a few more uh sort of russian made um six in uh 5p and six in 1p tubes um oops and you know again i think all of these provide a pretty even keeled sound signature nothing's really emphasized but nothing yeah but nothing's really emphasized so it's it's you know it's it's potentially a little bit dull um i had high hopes for this this Mazda uh, tube here. Uh, this is a uh, ECC 189. Um, wasn't wasn't super excited about that. Uh, RCA. Um, and and this is what's so interesting about tube rolling is like you can't just pick a brand and be like, oh, all RCAs are great, or all Telefunks are great, or all uh, PS uh, veins are great. It's like it really comes down to each tube and each application of the tube and that's what's so frustrating <laughs> about it anyway this is a rca i think made by um uh, made in germany probably by uh, siemens um again it's like a fine fine not that exciting this is a new tube uh, um made by uh, jj electronics which i have some power tubes and another amp by them but i that i love but this is just sort of like very Okay. Okay. So stop showing us tubes that are boring. Let's move on to what I call the honorable mentions category. So not my top contenders, but very good tubes that offer a lot of value for their price class. Um, this Philips um, PCC88. Boop. There it is. Yeah. This is a is a really nice quiet tube. So. One of the challenges in an amp like the Taboo is that 
you know, the noise floor needs to be controlled. Well, it doesn't need to be. It's up to you how much that sort of drives you crazy. For me, sometimes that, that background hum, that background noise can be really distracting from enjoying the music. And so this is a this is a very nice contender for something that's just, you know, very, very quiet. And it's nice separation, too. Um, instruments really come apart. Nothing super emotionally connective about it, but um, a really good performer. Um, I don't have all the tubes that I have notes on, so I'll show what I got. But um, I did try a Sylvania uh, 6922 that, um, that by comparison to the Phillips had a little more oomph, a little more bass. It was actually probably kind of bass heavy. Um, I don't know what's happened in that tube. Uh, Tongue Scram. By the way, I'll just butcher all kinds of names and numbers, so do your own research and double check me. Um, I, I've had uh, a couple of these. Um, they all tend to look a little bit different when I get them, but <laughs> a couple of those um, that I've run in different systems. It's a E88CC. Um, it's sort of got like a certain kind of ease to it. Um, it's got you know, sort of nice air in the upper regions. The bass kind of lacks a certain amount of power or presence, but it's very smooth, very natural. It's just, you know, totally pleasant, but maybe pleasant to a fault, maybe a little bit gutless. Um, who else? Okay, uh, National or um, uh, uh, Matsushiata. I don't know, just a couple different variations of this um, brand name, which I've just murdered. Um, Japanese tube, obviously. Um, these have just a ton of separation, a ton of detail. Um, lower mids tend to fall back a bit, um, and it's really nice on the vocals. Just a really sweet presentation. I, you know, um, I just got this one up upscale. I've, I've had another one as well. I've used them in a couple different systems and I I really really like this tube when I first got it and I found it really satisfying because it it sort of deals with a lot of the problems I was having with other tubes of either noise or being um uh, sort of easily uh, unsettled where one part would be sort of harsh or one part would be sort of too recessed it's a, a very even keeled and enjoyable tube so it's a kind of set it and forget it guy um the uh, P.S. Vane, these guys, they make some, uh, focus. These guys make some really sweet tubes. Um, this is their 12AT7 TII. Uh, it's a ECC81 variant. It's very detailed, very like 3D. I, I, I sort of think that's, that's, like I say, there's no house sound to tubes by brand, but I kind of think that's actually their house sound because um, I've had some of their power tubes. I've had some other input tubes from them, and I feel like they... Uh, and, and there's a lot of knockoffs of this stuff, and, and you have to be a little careful and thoughtful when you're buying this stuff, but I'll just speak to this tube. This tube is very detailed and very holographic and a lot of separation, a lot of space but it is, it's like bone dry. And that's not quite what I want out of a tube. Um, it's cool though, but that's the whole thing is like, you've got input tubes, you've got output tubes, you've got a rectifier. You can sort of balance between these tubes and find that right synergy that makes sense. And also what sort of works with the headphones that you're listening to or what works with the DAC that, or, or your source material that's ahead of that. Uh, I've tried a, a Mullard long plate, um, a little bit of noise, not not bad, not too distracting. Great detail in the upper mids and highs, very crisp. Um, you know, the there's a bit of sort of recession and softness in the mids and the lower mids. A little bit less detail in the bass, lacking a little bit of energy, but a great tube overall. And then um, I don't know where the tube from this box has run off to, but the. Um, uh, the Genelex Gold Lions. This, this is uh, recent manufactured stock, um, and so they're easy to get. They're affordable, 
they'll come with a warranty, I think, in most cases. Um, I, I, this is the 6922s. I've used these in a, in a couple of systems, and they're yeah, it's just easy, right? It's just easy to source them and to not have to worry about if they're going to arrive you know, unbalanced or wacky um, or damaged or die on you in a couple months, or if they really are what they claim to be. They're, they're new. They're just going out and buying a commodity product. Um, and I'd say, you know, th they've got some warmth. They've got some 3D to them. They kind of give you what, a, what you want out of a tube. Um, yeah. Okay. Now let's move on to sort of my ranked contenders, my, 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 my top tier. All right, we're really narrowing down to the tubes that I have really enjoyed the most in the Taboo. And again, I don't have all of them in front of me. Some were lent to me, some I've sold, some have died. Um, but I, I try to take good notes as I go. So even though I haven't heard all these tubes in one listening session, hopefully my, my, my memory and my notes are trustworthy. So tied for my third place of the tubes I've personally heard and auditioned in the taboo uh, would be a pair of telefunks and this is a name um, and and a brand that um, is super well regarded um, out of Germany and um, it's 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 one of these two brands that has gotten very legendary and the new old stock of them are like highly covetable and the prices are getting dumb and it's 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 very irritating, and I don't want to like any tubes uh, that bear the telephone name, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, sort of tied for third for me is the 12AU7, which is the e, uh, EECC82 variant, which it it's actually does have a bit of noise to it. Um, it can be quieted by a better uh, rectifier tube. So again, the whole synergy of the system really matters. Um, it's more n uh, sort of natural sounding than things like the PS vein. Um, but it might have a little bit less sparkle than something like that, but it's got more heft. It's very balanced and very enjoyable. The upper mids and highs are smooth and detailed all the way through. I wouldn't say it's the most energetic, um, but it's like, <laughs> um, you know, you never get fired for hi hiring IBM. You never get fired for buying a Telefunk. It, it's just, you're going to be happy. You're going to be satisfied. And you're not going to have to question that that's the weak link in your system. The other Telefunk that I've tried is the E88CC, which is very low noise floor. And it's super smooth and the sound is very natural and it's got this nice warm mids. Again, it's not the most sparkly or airy um, and doesn't have the most separation, but um, it's satisfying and, and it's exciting to listen to. And it's got more life than the 12AU7, um, but the bass is not as strong. So anyway, those two are my sort of tied for third place of all the input uh, or signal path tubes for the taboo. Now, this guy uh, is, I mean, it's like, just, I could have been showing you the same tube every time. <laughs> this one is a uh, uh, reflector, R-E-F-L-E-K-T-O-R, reflector. Uh, this is a 6N 23P, which is uh, an E eighty eight CC variant. It's a single wire singer single wire silver shield, and uh, I think this one's from the mid seventies, and I think that's kind of the sweet spot. Um, it is just a nice all arounder. It can punch when it needs to. Um, sometimes it can get a little hot or a little bloomy, but it's just a very passionate tube. Um, and it's spicier than the Telefunks, and it, and it is enjoyable for that for that reason. Um, it, it's I don't listen to a tube amp because I want it to be a reference quality flat sound. I listen to it because I want it to excite me, and I want to get excited about the music. And I think I feel like most of these are coming out of the Ukraine, um, so. I mean, you're taking a little bit of a risk. You're buying them on eBay or whatnot. They take forever to get here. Um, 
they're not super expensive but they're not super cheap but i th think value per dollar that's probably the sweet spot the the like pinnacle of where you could be for this but my first place <laughs> is a Tung Sol um, uh, 6SN7 GT. Uh, now, this tube is interesting because it's actually a proper radio tube where, like, not all of these input tubes were originally designed f to carry audio signal. And so, someone was talking to really made a good argument that maybe one of the reasons this tube is so good and so well regarded um, is because it was genuinely built for this um so this is um this tube requires an adapter you've got to get from uh 6sn7 to a 6922 uh, so here's the here's the pinout that would you know match uh the the the, the pinout of one of these guys and again you know when you're messing when you're when you're changing tubes you're actually changing the circuit you're actually changing how the electronics behave and so you need to be thoughtful you need to do your research you need to ask questions and see what the tolerances of the device that you're tube swapping are and you know what's okay and what could risk damaging the device damaging the tube so you know this is my my cya do your homework <laughs> i don't know that steve would say sure get an adapter and run these but if you do, <laughs> you will be rewarded with a very spacious, great amount of detail. You know, mids and vocals just come through so nicely. It's got heft. It's got impact on the drums. It goes so deep in the bass. Um, it's got what I'd call a good respective twang uh, in that, you know, it's got snap. Um, it can get a little shouty, like really intense segments of music. It can get a little hot again, depending on what your output tubes are and what your rectifier is, and yada yada yada. But it never loses its like footing. It you know it never gets like overwhelmed. It's just it's it's got some passion. It's got some heat, and you know it can get you know pronounced. Um, so that that's its negative, but the positives, whew, so worthwhile. Just it's almost. It's like when you find a tube like this, when you find the right thing for an amp, it's like a different amp, and, and that's beautiful. I did try um, uh, another tube in the um, Success in 7 family, which was a PS Vane uh, CV181 TII, and I, I, didn't get, I didn't get a ton of listening time on it, but um, it did have really good heft and nice weight to the mids and the lower ranges. It was very smooth. Um, but the highs seemed a little duller than this this gem of a tube. So that is gonna, <laughs> that's going to wrap it up. 45 minutes later, that's going to wrap it up on the input tube. Now, the, the amount of, of tubes I've rolled in the other parts of the amp is like tiny compared to this. So if for some reason you're still watching this video, the rest will be short. I'll be straight with you. I have not tried a lot of variations in the output tube because I'm pretty happy with what I got. And... As I wandered away from it, I didn't really find a lot of improvement. These are um, the stock Russian 6N15N uh, tubes. These are, I believe, SV83 tube equivalents. Um, they sound fine. They sound good. No complaints. Um, I did try these... Uh, Genelax, uh, again, new new production tubes. These are, um, what are these? <laughs> oh, yeah, these are EL84s, EL84s, uh, which is actually a, a, a much more common sort of power tube and, and relatively easy to source. But what I landed on was these um, uh, tube, tube Amp Doctor Tad uh, uh, tubes. These are also uh, EL84s, and uh, these sort of hit the mark for me. Uh, they've got nice punch, nice power. Um, they they don't really get in the way of the input tube, and I guess that's kind of for me the measure. I I, I feel like that's that's where you're driving so much of the the sound that um, that what you want is something just really clean and, and that, that doesn't detract or, or dull or emphasize what you've done with your input tube selection. That may be very misguided of me. 
I'm often misguided, but that that's sort of where I've ended up and I've decided not to go crazy in this area and just keep focusing <laughs> on the input tubes. Um, but what I was surprised to learn is is the impact that the rectifier has because I I just thought that wouldn't matter and I've been told that it shouldn't matter. So uh, I have learned some lessons there. So the rectifier's job in simple terms is basically to turn AC current into DC current. And um, you can do that with um, a cheap little solid state part you can do with the tube. And one of the reasons to do with the tube is that it's not soldered in, so it's serviceable, you can swap it out, but also because, you know, uh, when you're doing it with a, um, a part that you can swap out, you can sort of influence how that happens. And I suspected, not being an electrical engineer, that this was not a tube that I should care about in terms of sound quality. This is just a tube that needed to be serviced and swapped out. And this is the Valve Art 274B that uh, came with the unit. And when I started getting a lot of hum and some weirdness happening, I started playing with the tubes and, and recognized that this guy was the issue. And so um, I swapped in a few things, a few sort of random new old stock things, a uh, uh, Chatham 4R5, an old RCA tube and a Sylvania and just just tried some things you know they seem cheap they're fun to play with and a lot of times it would sort of bring the sound down and make it quieter less punchy uh, sort of more muddied um, and ultimately uh, I ended up with this this JJ um, uh, 5U 4GB which is not an expensive tube I think it's 18, 20 bucks. Uh, and, you know, not only was it a good replacement, but actually it, it, um, it added a nice bit of sort of, uh, sort of tightness and the bass got a little snappier, a little smarter. Um, and, and so it turned out to be a win over this valve art, although arguably not as sexy of a tube if you're into these sort of things. Um, I also did get a chance at one point to try a, a higher end a rectifier, and man, if if you go down that rabbit hole, there are some expensive tubes in this world, crazy expensive tubes. Um, but I tried one that's expensive, but not dumb expensive, which is the PS Fane two seven four B rectifier. So very very similar to the 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 sort of construction and build of the Valve Art. Um, and it did add a touch more body over the JJ, and um, it, it made some of the noisier uh, like input tubes that I like like sort of quieter. It sort of seemed to c control them a bit more. <laughs> um, so I guess you get what you pay for. And again, you know, this is all alchemy and science. You got to mess around and see what makes sense in terms of the overall system. But I find that this for the money is a pretty hard to beat you know rectifier against the input and output tubes that i personally like to run at long last we've come to the end of the epic odyssey that is signcraft's uneducated and overly detailed <laughs> review of the deckware taboo mark iii hope you enjoyed it um i hope you found some little tidbit in there that was useful if if you've got a different tube combo that you think rocks, please let me know. I am always willing to open my wallet for um, stupid tube expenditures. Um, no, if you if you've got something that you, that you think I missed that's that's great in this in this uh, device, or you've tried another, you know, six nine two two or twelve AU seven or something that you like in another system, and you think it's worth checking out, like definitely let me know. Would love would love a hot tip. Um, or any of the other tubes, output tubes, uh, rectifiers, let me know. Um, if you own this amp, if you love this amp, let me know. If you have a sort of all tube amp that you think is just the bee's knees that, that needs attention, also let me know. Um, just basically let me know anything you know. I want to know what you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, please share this video, and uh, until next time, this is Sinecraft signing out.